think this is a good spot. Ooh, I hear myself. <sighs> My heart's beating really fast, and um, I'm nervous a little bit, and I'm excited. I feel vulnerable. Yep, that's my sister. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is vulnerability is a good thing, and we forget that sometimes. ALS has blessed me with a new perspective, and this perspective is, is that, well, first of all, I'm not gonna say that this disease is pretty by any means at all. This disease is relentless, stabilitating, and we still really desperately need a cure. But when I'm talking about the perspective of vulnerability, I'm talking about the fact that people treat me different than when I'm in my wheelchair. I wear my vulnerability every time I go out in the streets and take photos. And it's taught me a lot. It's taught me an incredible amount of the fact that Nobody is intimidated by my appearance. My wheelchair breaks social boundaries. And so I guess I'm trying to explain is that, you can tell that I'm really excited right now. What I'm trying to say is that, you know, people treat me in a kind way, kind of like my childhood point of view. Do you remember when you were a child, when you used to physically look up to everybody that you encountered? You, you trusted their perspective of the world. You were ready to listen and take in their knowledge and they were ready to teach their perspective because we had something to learn and nobody was intimidated by our appearance at that time. And so I guess it's kind of nice to realize that you don't have to be in a stroller or in a wheelchair to kind of to embrace this perspective. That's what my biggest lesson is because you know I'm considered a very disabled individual, increasingly so. And I, I really truly believe that I am a more abled street photographer because I am allowed to be vulnerable. And in turn, it gives others to be vulnerable as well. I get to witness kindness, compassion, people that really wanna care, that really wanna help. I get to approach the mistakenly unapproachable, people littered with tattoos, the homeless, the addicts, people that we believe can't contribute, but guess what, they can. They help me every day when I'm out in the streets. I go out by myself with my wheelchair and my camera, and it's a lot of money worth of equipment, but they embrace me with their kindness, with their love. It's really beautiful to see. It's really beautiful to see. Oh, man. You know, Perspective is, I guess, the theme of my conversation, and having this disease really, really shows me that that time and life is just way too short. It's way too short. You got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, I pretty much cry every time I go on television of some kind, but. You know, life is short, it is, it really is. I think we really forget that. We get distracted with our devices, with our screens, I can't physically pick them up anymore. And so in a way, it's a good thing. You know, I can't even bring the camera to my face, so I live and I, I'm involved in every single moment and I like to photograph the mistakenly ordinary because I feel like sometimes we miss it, you know? And so I, when I do go out, I am, you know, I think photography is an excuse for me to really embrace this kindness and soak it in. It charges my soul. It really, really does. And you don't have to be in my position to experience this. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Having a humble perspective is an inviting perspective. It reveals the, uh, the, the, really the true potential of human kindness. It allows us to collaborate, to build trust. And the people that I encounter, they are disarmed because of my appearance. It's kind of crazy, you know? We are all going through something, whether or not we show it or not. The people that I, that I see that are smiling, as soon as they see me, they, I wouldn't have guessed the kind of adversity that they're hiding beneath their skin. You know, we're all going through something and we need kindness more than ever and that's the way I'm looking at it. Last thing I would like to say is that I would not be able to go out in the streets and do what I'm passionate about without the unwavering support of my wife, Larnie, I love you. 
She's not worried. She's not here today because she's working hard right now. I love you so much. I wouldn't be able to do this without my mom's example. She's been fighting with this disease now for almost 15 years. And so I love you, Mom. Thank you for the inspiration. To my family, to my siblings, to my uh, tribe who gives me everything I need, I, I thank you. And finally, I want to say thank you to those that participate in the technology that liberates me. I would not be able to go and embrace this new perspective I have with the world without my power wheelchair, without my breathing machine, without this amazing camera. I wouldn't be able to do what I do. And, and, and I feel like this ordinary abilities, it's regaining them. Then I thought I lost them, you know? And so to those that I do not know your name, thank you for your tireless efforts in labs, for your many years of studying and researching. I am a result of your work and sweat and tears. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, from all of my being. Thank you. That's it.